Safety is an important element of any tabletop game, especially in a horror-themed one. Content warnings for this Let's Play of Starhold are Violence Injury Death Darkness The Ocean Dark Water Loss Needles Fire And Body Horror So in the last episode, uh, North, you just stepped off the shuttle bus um, and you were expecting to see essentially the thriving new colony that you've come to know in your time working there. And instead, what you see is a dark observation deck. All the lights are off and it looks like no one's home. What do you do? Is there a light switch or light switch equivalent that I can toggle a few times to see if the power is in fact out. This is a very large area. This is essentially like if you walked into the food court at a mall, right? Uh Um, There's not really any public ability to turn off the lights because that would probably end up with chaos. Uh, Just little Tara's running around turning the lights off and on all the time. (laughs) That never happens. I think I will walk back to the opening of the ship uh, and kind of like poke my head in um, and just let everybody know there seems to be some kind of situation going on out here. All the lights are off. I don't see any people. The uh, The emergency running lights are on. I don't see any danger, uh, so to speak, but I'm not comfortable with the situation. So uh, if I could ask that y'all just kind of hang around here. Um, maybe like pick a buddy and stick to him for now. Uh, just to make sure that, you know, if there is something going wrong, nobody gets caught up in it. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and take a look out there. If anybody feels confident and would like to come along, I can't really tell you no. And I, to be perfectly honest, wouldn't really mind it. Yes. If there is the potential that anyone could have come to harm in any way, I would certainly like to come along. This is all not on the itinerary. I was expecting a welcoming party, and if you wouldn't mind me coming with you, Mr. Northwood, then I would like to make sure that everything's all right. Six, I asked for macadamia nut, I say as I eat my MRE. (laughs) (laughs) Eh, I mean, that's what they had. I could take it if you want. No, 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 this is fine. Well, Mr. Northwood, lead the way. Uh, yeah, sure thing. Just give me one second to go uh, grab something out of the galley, um, and then we will make our way uh, off the ship. Anybody else who is not confident, again, just grab a buddy. Uh, everybody hold tight. I'll be right back. Uh, and I'm going to go to the cupboard and open it. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm I'm good. Are we, are we back? Is good, everyone off good. the ship? Can I sneak back on? Yeah. No, um, there's sort of a bit of a situation out there and, um, what do you mean? Something's, some, well, I don't know yet. Something's weird. Just you stay here. Look, I would feel a lot more comfortable if some other people could know that you were on this ship. No, please, please, please don't, just for no, like don't everybody's. Say anything, don't, please don't say anything. Please don't say anything. Yeah, but like, this, okay, this here's, moms. there's a thing going on. I, there's something I can't say. I don't know what. It's not that I can't say what. I literally don't know what is going on outside of the ship. And it seems like it might be a little bit. It may be dangerous. I don't want to jump the gun, but I'm I'm just worried that if nobody knows you're on the ship and things go real bad, then like maybe you get left on the ship and then I'm in trouble and you're in trouble and everybody's in trouble. And I would much prefer that that did not happen. Please, can I at least tell Juliet that you're here, please? What if I just stay here? I'll just stay on the ship and be super safe and like super safe. And, and nobody has to know that I'm here. And well, you can just go make sure everything's OK and I won't say anything and you don't have to say anything and I'll be safe. It's fine. And I'll stay here. I'll definitely I'll definitely stay here. I think I'm getting successfully bossed around by a child. All right, fine. But you do not come out for nothing unless me or someone else that you recognizes gives you the OK. I'm going to go check this out. You you buckle down. You stay hidden just in case. Yeah, sure. I'll definitely do that. But you're not going to tell anyone I'm here. Right. 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 North. Yeah. Yeah. OK, Pinky promise. No. 
I'm not going to. Okay. I'll I'll pinky promise. Cool. You're not going to tell me. Is this an influence someone? I was going to say, if you wanted to uh, see if, uh, well, I see this, this is more up to North than it is Mm -hmm. to to Tara, though. Do you think that that's something that would have to be rolled? Or do you think that she's just convincing as is? Like, is he kind of a pushover for her kind of getting her way? I think that. I'm worried enough about this that she's going to really have to convince me. Like, I, yeah, I think this merits rolling against me. Okay. So, yeah, uh, if you think that this needs an influence, then I would say, Tara, go ahead and roll influence someone to see if you can convince him to kind of let you stay on the ship and not tell anyone that you're there. All right. Sounds good. So influence someone when you're rolling it against a spacer is using your connection stat. So uh, just go ahead and roll your CX with North and uh, let me know what you get. Well, I rolled a five and I have a plus one connection with North. So that puts me at a nice round six. All right. Uh Damn it. So on a miss, North gets to decide how he's going to react to this and if it changes the relationship between the two of you and what it might cost within reason. You also get a plus one forward north on your next roll using CX against Tara. Okay. And I get an experience. <laughs> and you get an experience. <laughs> All right. I think, I think like, as she's trying to convince me, I start, like, backing away from the open cupboard. And I'm like, I, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't hide it no more. It's too spooky out there. I don't know what's going to go. I'm just going to tell Juliet. Don't, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Juliet. Just Juliet. What? She's cool. She's an intern. She's too scared to say anything anyway. It'll be fine. Uh, and I'm just going to turn and kind of power walk <laughs> back towards where <laughs> Juliet is uh, and be like, uh, hey, um, Jules, could I get your uh, request your presence in the galley, please? Uh, miss, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Northwood. Sure. Uh, what do you need? Uh, once we're back around the corner, I'll be like. All right, so there's a bit of a separate, um, a a different situation that's going on. Uh, Remember the the child that we were to deliver to Arcadia for the governor? Miss Lake, of course. Uh, We left her with her aunt back on Arcadia. Yeah, I I opened the cupboard door. (laughs) Oh, I, okay, I would not have gone back to my hiding place, though. Like, (laughs) so if I know that he's going to fucking go tattle on me, I am going to try to hide. I am trying to hide somewhere else and then get out of there if possible. I don't know if that's a possibility, how much hiding room there is here, but... It is a very small ship, so I will say if you're trying to hide in what is essentially a bus, uh, go ahead and roll Keep Your Head Down. See if you can uh, get out of this without being noticed. That's a six. Oh, (laughs) Oh my God. I'm nailing it today. (laughs) Wonderful. (laughs) You're so close to leveling up. It's great. Um, Okay. On a miss, you draw dangerous attention to yourself immediately. So I'll say this is not a high stakes moment in terms of danger. So you just essentially like you plan to leave the cupboard uh, and go hide somewhere, but it doesn't succeed. Go ahead and tell me how you were trying to hide and uh, how it fails miserably. (laughs) I think I'm I'm hiding under a chair with like my head down on the floor and my hands over the top of my head, but like my feet are completely sticking out from under the chair. Uh, so our little pal Tara here um, did manage to squirrel away back on the ship on the way, and she's trying to hide from her folks because she don't want to go back again. Um, that's a problem that we will visit at some point, but for the moment, I just felt that it was pressing that somebody else knows she's on the ship, you know, just in case whatever's going on out there merits action and as you're talking like you can see that like juliet is just like increasingly seems to be getting like there's this look of panic and she's like oh my god oh my god oh she oh no oh no she uh she was she was supposed to be left on arcadia yeah she is not supposed to be here yeah huh. um oh god that was that was my job i was supposed to make sure she stayed off the ship now oh no ho- oh now, no calm i'm down. gonna get fired calm down it was both of our jobs um, and well, I mean, it's, it's, Hey, it's going to be fine. Cause so far nobody else knows about this goof. So as long as we keep it quiet and subtle, maybe somehow we can figure out a way around this without any of us getting into any unnecessary trouble. But for the moment, I just want you to know that she's here so that if she needs looking out for, you can look out for her while I'm off the ship. Can you do that? 
I'll try, Mr. North. I'm sorry. Mr. Northwood, I'm sorry. It's fine. No, no, North North is fine. Thank you kindly. You just, you do what you need to do. You stay here and buckle down. I'll be back. Oh, God, I'm going to lose my internship. I'm going to have to go back to Arcadia. They're going to make me go back. Ah, I don't want to. Okay, okay. I just like gingerly slide one of the bars across the table to her and then turn around and walk out. Yeah, you just see her take it and she's just holding it like a, a comfort <laughs> object. <laughs> Uh, deep breaths deep breaths macy you can do this i hand her opie and then she just got both of them it's like that scene from the labyrinth where they just keep handing sarah (laughs) stuff just (laughs) all right what about the rest of you what are you guys doing callista gray it would seem that they are in dire need of a full meal before we embark is there anything that i could get for you i will just do it myself since apparently no one can find a macadamia nut mre and i'm going to uh go into the galley all right. I think this is as North is leaving. So, like, mm-hmm. you're just almost running straight into each other. Mr. Northwood, are we Whoa. almost ready to go? Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, we are just now ready to go. Um, Everybody gather up your whatever you need to take with you. Um, If you've got anything fragile, I might leave it here on the ship. If you've got anything protective, I might bring it with you. Uh, And let's all saddle up and get on out of here. Figure out what's going on out there. I'm sorry, Miss Macy isn't coming with us. She was my main point of contact here on CR4079. Oh, don't, no, don't worry. I can take care of that. I know the governor personally. We're on great terms. I'll be able to hook you up with whoever you need to talk to once we get out there, just as soon as we find somebody to talk to. Pardon me. I would feel much more comfortable if I had Miss Macy. I unfortunately have had to reassign Miss Macy to a different task here on the ship for the security of our other visitors. Um, I cannot at this time assign her a priority task of watching over you. It's just sort of a numbers thing. Um, but I can assure you that I am a great looker out for her and talker to people her, and I will be able to get you whatever you need once we're out there on the base. We can both come. I'm so sorry. Who are you? Who are you? Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Miss, Miss Lake, please, please, quiet. Yeah, uh, um, uh, that was me. Sorry, Ambassador. Um, just had some food in my mouth. <laughs> and you can see, like, she's just kind of got her foot kind of pushing Tara under the chair further. Just like, um, uh, uh, Ambassador, I kind of have a stomach ache. I'm sorry. I just, uh, um, uh, uh, I'm grabbing my possum back from her. <laughs> you, just, you just see one hand just slow. Oh, no. Uh, uh, I think I'm going to uh, look at six and kind of nudge my head uh, and have her uh, lift up the chair for me, please. She just grunts and lifts it up. I just stand up. I don't believe I saw any children on the manifest. Mr. Northwood, could you explain this? I would absolutely love to. However, it's Tara Lake. Mm-hmm. It's Tara Lake. Thank you very much, Mr. Q. Oh, you're welcome. I assume that if there is some sort of outage happening in the colony, she would be quite helpful in maneuvering through the space. The governor's daughter, Tara Lake. Nope, nope, nope. We just we just have the same name. That's not me. That's not me. Of course. Come on, dear. Let's all go together. Yeah. I'll lead the way. <laughs> now, 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 hold on, okay? As the lead security consultant of this colony... I don't feel like I should need to point out I do not that it might walking. be dangerous <laughs> to bring a child. Uh, I think I I think Mr. North would she's gone. Um, should we catch up with her? God dag gum. Yeah. All right, everybody, hurry up. Let's go. We're not letting a little kid wander alone out into the darkness. So yeah, you see the same thing as you're leaving, Tara. You've spent your life at this point, or at least the life that you've been living on the colony. Uh, exploring this place, and you're very familiar with the observation deck. It does not ever look like this. Even during the sleep cycle, the lights never go off. Uh, it is dark and eerily quiet. So there's no one around, and everything's dark and spooky. I mean, I I know the way out of here. So I would just walk out and see everything open and empty and go, Hello! You hear the echo off the metal walls. Hello. Hello. Hmm. I'll um, come up to her and be getting the uh, tactical flashlight out. Okay. That was an excellent echo, Tara Lake. Hey, thanks. You're welcome. Is there a spot that the people here would congregate if there was some sort of emergency or power outage? Hmm, power outage. How common is that? On this colony, not at all. They've been 
trying their best to make this as appealing a place to live as possible. So one of the first things that they did was ensure that uh, they use thermal vents from the seafloor to kind of power the colony itself. And there's no reason why those should stop working. They're, you know, natural functions that have been going for thousands of years. I don't know. My moms always tell me that if there's something bad that happens, that someone will tell me a safe place to go. But we've never had that happen before. So this is new. Hmm, interesting. I suppose we should explore a little, hmm? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Let's look around. I think this is about this point that you, the rest of you have kind of caught up. I assume you left the ship, unless you want to stay there forever. We can always do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've definitely made my way out. Still gun at the ready. Uh, I think I'm far more nervous about this than anybody else seems to be. Uh, so okay. I'm going to try to take point and start maneuvering slowly and cautiously deeper into the what is the what's the term for this facility colony just the colony okay yeah you're you know from being here that you're currently on level one it's the uh layer closest to the ice and then there's like subsequent layers that go down uh on this level you know just from having been here that uh the shuttle hangar is here uh the observation deck the cafeteria it's kind of like the the common area it's where people go to live and to um you know for recreation and to work there's the headquarters up here you also know this is where the communications room is um and just a couple of like other small uh areas that are meant for the general public I would like to start leading us toward wherever I think I could try and get the lights back on. You would know that the the lights are probably controlled from the headquarters or somewhere in terms of like the administration. Um, so that would be the most likely place for you to go. It's either that or it's going to be something controlled from the generator room, which is way, way down there. So you don't really know which one it's going to be. Um, but if you're just looking for like a general place to go right now, I would say it's common knowledge and you don't really need to roll for it that probably the administration area and the headquarters would be most likely place to start. Okay. Yeah, I think it would also occur to me that that might be where people have gone if there was some need to retreat or whatever, that headquarters might be a decent place to fall back to. So, all right, y'all follow me. Uh, everybody pick somebody and stick to them. We're going to head for the uh, HQ, see if we can't find anybody or get these lights back on. So you guys head down through the area. Um, you exit the observation deck and head into the marketplace. That's the second place that is supposed to welcome visitors and, and new arrivals. And it is very much like the observation deck. It is dark. Only unlike the observation deck, there's no outside window to kind of bring in that light from the, from the underside of the ice. So it is pitch in here. There is nothing to be seen except for the emergency lights on the floor, which barely illuminate almost anything. And again, like the observation deck, you don't see anyone, but you do hear almost the faint sound of water. Not a lot, just light sound of dripping. Q, could you do me a favor? Could you bring that flashlight front and center here for me? Oh, yes, of course. And I'll come up and click it on now that it's much darker. And as you click it on, there's this moment of almost like blinding flash. And it takes you a second to realize that what you're experiencing is the light reflecting directly off of this very thin layer of water on the ground. And it's not everywhere. It seems to be like in more in some areas than the others. Um, but there does seem to be some kind of wetness that is just on the floor. I want to like dip a finger in it and see if it indeed seems like water. Like, is it a different, is it a more viscous fluid or is it actually just water in here? Yeah, I will say that you put your hand down and when it comes back, it seems almost gelatinous and you only get like a little bit on your finger, but the little bit that you get on your finger starts to sting almost immediately. It's still watery, but there's something in the water that seems different. Uh, okay, I'm going to like shake my hand off, like wipe it on my pants real quick. Dad, gum. I don't know what this is. It ain't water. Careful. Make sure you're not stepping in it. If this is something that burns more than just skin, that could be a problem. Do you think this is some kind of like runoff or byproduct from the generators going bad or something? Excellent question. Can I attempt to sort of... I, 
follow what is what's in my head, but I don't know that that's right. But like, I yeah, you know, I want to kind of try to track since it isn't everywhere, like you said. I want to see if there's like a spot maybe where we can hear that dripping or something that it's coming from. Yeah. Um, I would say go ahead and roll me a survey the scene. That's plus head. 11. Uh, go ahead and ask two from the list. What happened here? I would say just from the what you can see um, and kind of your general knowledge of maybe chemicals uh, based off of just what you've done medically, you can see that this is some kind of organic byproduct. It seems like it's slimy and it doesn't look like battery acid. It doesn't look like anything that would have come off of something uh, industrial. This seems more, more organic than that, Uh, but it doesn't seem to have any, like, it's not coding everything. It just seems to be in like random spaces. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I don't think I vocalize that yet. Is there something important that I'm missing? You start to follow these random spots on the floor. Um, and it takes a moment before you start to notice that, like, there seems to be an overall direction that they're heading. Even if they're not, like, any kind of trail that you can really pick out, they seem to start getting more and more frequent as they're heading towards um, the other side of this kind of marketplace and start to see kind of almost a – what looks like a dragging of it or a, a smearing of some of these puddles instead of just – perfectly round or or oval shaped they're they're starting to kind of smear okay um yeah i think i go back to the group and kind of gesture for them to follow and and show them what to amount to these sort of tracks this does not seem to me like it is some byproduct from a generator as you suggested i think that something is leaving it tar lake are there any sort of creatures or pets that are common in the colony? And while he's asking that, I'm flipping through the sort of brief that I had of this colony on my data pad to see if I see anything about it. Yeah, what kind of what kind of animals do we have here? Are they even uh, able to be here? Yeah, so I will say um, just based off of kind of the knowledge they gave you uh, in the brief and what you've seen in your explorations, there are no animals animals um they they, there's just not the space the greenhouse grows all the food and all the protein comes from plant sources or lab sources they do have animals that are native to this planet kind of like these alien almost fish like things but nothing that you've ever nothing ever bigger than maybe a football that you've seen and certainly when they're talking about uh the local fauna on the brief all it ever says is like inedible fish there's some weird fish sometimes outside but not like anything that leaves slime that hurts you well it would seem that something is indeed creating slime that hurts you i would say that you kind of have this sense that there is something wrong with this because this is very much out of any of your expectations um it's not something that you would have ever experienced or expected to experience on this particular colony. So yeah, what do you guys want to do with that knowledge? You know where it's going, or at least kind of. Where is it heading towards? Which room? So you came in from the observation deck, and it seems like these spots are much less frequent closer to the observation deck. But as you head through the marketplace towards the opposite side, where kind of like these very large double airlock doors, essentially, that are not usually closed because they're supposed to be kept open and except except in a case of emergency. As you approach those doors, these sort of tracks, sort of very thin puddles, whatever you want to call them, start to become more frequent and in fact start to look like uh, less like something that's just been sitting there for a while and more like something that has been moved through somehow. I mean, do I know where those doors lead to? Yeah, you do. You know that this leads through to the cafeteria. And on the other side of that is the administration area with the headquarters. Um, But that next room is the cafeteria, and there's a lot more slime over there. So we should be careful. I, I probably should have asked this a long time ago. But do I know of any, like, general emergency procedures that would be followed here? 
like what just, you know, what a fallback point would be or in case of this kind of disaster, we do this. Yeah, I would say that you've worked here long enough. You're not head of security, although you do report to uh, her name is Rebecca Vlaska, and she's the one who runs security on uh, on the iceberg colony. She's probably briefed you a little bit on kind of the general basic emergency stuff, but they haven't really gone over much in terms because they didn't really expect anything. Generally, it's supposed to be that if there's a breach, uh, say one of the outer colony walls breaches and the water starts flooding in, then essentially these kind of airlock doors would shut to keep each section free from filling up with water. Um, so that if one section is completely compromised, at least the rest of them aren't. Uh, you also know that if the entire colony was to somehow, you know, catch on fire or something like devastating was supposed to happen, people were supposed to try and get to the shuttle hangers. And if they couldn't get to the shuttle hangers, there are some emergency pods uh, in the living quarters and a couple of other places where they could essentially be jettisoned into the ocean to kind of wait for rescue. But for the most part, as far as congregation goes, you think probably administration, if there was really nowhere else, or people would be kind of probably congregating in the cafeteria, like just a place that is kind of known for lots of people to hang out in. So you you don't really know where it would be, but you know that that's likely to be. Okay. I will address the group. All right. We clearly got no idea what's going on here. The way I see it, we got two options. Either we retreat back to the shuttle and we close them doors and we wait until we get some communication and hunker down, or we keep on pushing through towards headquarters and administration. I have a feeling that if people fell back to anywhere, that's where they fell back to. In the interest of safety, I would recommend that y'all fall on back to the shuttle where we know that it's safe. We've cleared that path. Everybody can be secure back there. I can carry on towards headquarters and administration Figure out what's going on. Come back and fetch y'all later when it's cool. Uh, you you hear from up ahead, hey, I found some spots. If you jump from here to here to here and then there and then here, you can get past it. Come on. Dead gum. <laughs> Tara, get back here. Hurry up. She is very handy at finding what we need to find in this place. I, for one, will not be falling back. If there's even the remotest chance that someone is injured, I'll be coming along. Forgive me, Mr. Northwood. As much as I value my personal safety, it would be very bad optics if I just waited on the ship while something dangerous happened. So if you wouldn't mind, I'm coming with you. You just see uh, Juliet Macy waffling, kind of looking back towards the ship, looking at the group, kind of looking... Oh, oh, fine. And then she just starts going towards uh, where Tara is. I really need this job. Yeah, she's she's just not staying behind either. All right, now listen. None of y'all know any better what's going on here than I do. As the only one with any experience running security on this place, I think I should be the one to speak with authority, and I don't think none of y'all are taking this seriously enough. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what the scenario is. Sorry, but I got me a politician and a medic and a kid and an intern out here. Six, you seem like you could handle yourself. You I'm not so super worried about. But the rest of y'all are, at best, a liability. And I do not think that y'all should be proceeding on through this facility all willy-nilly like. Oakley Northwood, I'm sensing frustration. I told you North is fine. You can just call me North. The full name makes me feel like I'm being reprimanded by my mother. While I'm certainly not your mother, I think you're correct in sensing at least a slight bit of being reprimanded. Safety in numbers and all that? If there is something here that is a danger, and we have no line of communication between each other, I think that it would be prudent for us all to stay together. And while you're correct, I am a medic. I take out the magnum. (laughs) I think I'll do okay. Damn, Q. (laughs) So, shall we proceed? Fine, but I would love it if you would give the stick-together safety and numbers talk to the child who keeps running ahead. Stop being slow. I am just frustratedly trudging ahead to try and catch up to this kid. How far ahead is Tara by now? The slime closer to the door, it seemed like it had been dragged through. Does it keep having a continuation of those spots where there's like empty patches or is it like covering this floor in here? 
it seems to reach a kind of maximum in terms of frequency. Um, but I will say that as you move forward, you start to see that those drag marts get longer and longer. So it's less like, um, less like a puddle, like a standing area and more like something is just being dragged. It's still kind of got about the same amount of space. So you don't seem to have any real problem stepping over them or stepping around them than you did before. Okay, yeah. Then I just kind of hopscotch my way through and I'm just waiting in the next room, like within like talking distance to them, but not close enough that they can like physically send me back to the ship. <laughs> like I'm I'm staying with the group, but like also keeping distance to mm-hmm. where like I know if I need mm-hmm. to bolt, I can. Okay. I would say that at this point, Juliet is behind you. There, there's a look of panic on her face that is gone from like DEFCON 5 to whatever next level there is. Um, and she's like looking around this kind of dark cafeteria and she goes, Miss Lake, please, I'm... I'm just saying, could you, um, could you wait, uh, five seconds so, uh, Mr. Northwood can catch up because I don't really feel comfortable in the dark and, oh god, oh no. Hey, uh, don't worry, Juliet, I've got a knife. And I pull out my, <laughs> <laughs> I pull out my folded oh my knife. God. Miss Lake, I'm gonna say this as clearly as possible so you understand. That doesn't make me feel better. Well, it should, because <laughs> I've won every knife fight I've ever been <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm good with it. You know how many bodies are floating outside these windows? Because of Tara Lake. <laughs> That's why she was sent away. This is exactly the energy of that video of the little kid running around at a birthday party. And the mom goes, what do you got? <laughs> a knife! <laughs> no! Uh, oh, lordy. Uh, as you're kind of moving through the cafeteria, since you're the first one in there, I would also say that you noticed that that sound of water has gotten a little bit closer. It's not super loud. You kind of have to stay quiet for a moment to hear it. But there's definitely kind of this insistent drip, 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 drip coming from somewhere on the other side of the cafeteria, maybe. Uh, I definitely want to go check it out, but I'll let you guys have a chance to catch up if you're if you're actually moving. Yes, I think we're hustling. I think as as we're moving up, I want to ask Callista, just like, now, what exactly were you aiming for while you were here? What was your your purpose on this journey? Uh, I was supposed to meet with the governor in order to negotiate trade. What sort of trade might that have been? Platinum, iridium, tellarium. Was this at anybody's expense? Like, is there a reason that maybe somebody would be sicking on our colony here because of whatever you're here to talk about? I mean, CR4079 is famously... Rich in resources, but if you're implying that Arcadia would have tried to do some sort of underhanded maneuver, then there's no need. They sent me for a reason. No, I'm not implying nothing against Arcadia specifically, but maybe somebody that Arcadia is at odds with. It's just, it's awfully peculiar for a colony as fresh as ours to be encountering these sorts of issues, and my first inclination is to think that there's foul play somewhere. Not that you're behind it, but that maybe you were like a focus? Like a target? Is that possible? I mean, I have been a target before, but that's why I have my bodyguard always right next to me. Isn't that right, Six? Mm. (laughs) (laughs) All right, just stick close to your bodyguard. In case you are a target, in case something bad's going on here, it might be coming for you, and assassination is not a thing that I'd like to have to write in a report. Oh, it's not something that I would like to experience either, so don't worry about that. All right, I'll keep pushing forward, um, keeping an eye out, like asking Q to keep like sweeping the area with that flashlight so that we can see what the hell's going on as we move forward towards the uh, headquarters area. So yeah, you kind of enter the cafeteria section and uh, you see very much the same thing that uh, that Tara was seeing. It's doesn't seem like there's more uh, of those kind of puddles, but they definitely seem to be getting longer seem to be heading in a direction um and you also just if you take a moment you can hear that drip 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 in the distance uh i want to follow that sound and figure out what the source is i think for that because it's it's kind of echoey in here it's a big empty space with you know lots of uh, metal walls go ahead and roll a survey of the scene for me to see if you can really kind of identify the direction 
Eight. So you get one question off the list. Is it fair to ask, is there something important that I'm missing? I think as you're standing in this cafeteria area, um, and it's very much like the observation deck, this whole floor is supposed to kind of convey some sense of grandeur, even in a limited space that the colony really has to offer. So unlike some of the other levels, this one has a very high ceiling. It's kind of supposed to give that sense of outdoorsiness. And as you kind of take a moment to stop and assess what's going on and to see if you can really figure out maybe what you're missing, you realize that that sound sounds a lot like water falling from a high place. And so you do what most people don't normally do in video games or any other part of life. You turn the flashlight upwards and look at the ceiling and you see these almost sponge-like forms plastered like barnacles up on the ceiling. And they look, for the most part, kind of hard, like rock almost. But dripping from a couple of them is just this like steady drip, drip, drip of some kind of watery gel that is coming off of them. What in Sam Hill is that? And there are like a lot of these? I'll give you this because now the light's on them. You can see that there are patches where some parts seem to be empty. And it seems like those empty patches correspond with the areas on the floor that don't have stuff. Um, so they're just kind of a patchy network that is across the ceiling. Do there seem to be more in any particular direction? Uh, yes, there definitely seems to be more in this area. Like if you look back towards the ceiling behind you, you can see that the patch gets like, you know, progressively more and more empty. Um, but there definitely seems to be like more frequent as you head into the inner area of this level of the colony. Oh God. No North? North, what are what are those? Do I have any idea what these are? I'll give you this. No. You have no idea. I don't know what they are, but I don't like them. Can we go into the next room? Yeah. Yeah, let's keep moving. Everybody Watch your head. Make sure you don't walk under none of these. It seems like they're dripping goop all over the damn place. I think I move towards the back of the groups so that I'm the last one and I keep the gun up in case. I, I don't know why. I just have in my head, I'm, I'm like ready for these things to start dropping for some reason. Yeah, and I'd say the group of you moves forward and you head towards that uh, next set of double doors. Um, and this one leads into a slightly more closed area. The cafeteria and the marketplace and the observation deck were all much larger kind of open spaces. Whereas as you kind of exit on the far side, the ceiling is still tall. It's still supposed to kind of give off that sense of grandeur. Um, but the walls are much closer. And on each side, you see these kind of like giant ornate door frames that are mock door frames because for the most part, the actual doors are just normal sized. Um, but they kind of are supposed to kind of give the sense of like ostentatiousness, like we've got money and we're going to show you why you should want to be here. Um, and they have like little plaques on each side. One says like communications room, one says administration, one says uh, colony headquarters. And I will give you this since you are looking up. As you kind of move into the space, which is much closer and, and much more like compact, those things on the ceiling seem to be more and more frequent and the bases on the floor that you can kind of get through seem to kind of diminish more. Well, this is worse. Yeah, this ain't great, but if we're going to find anybody, I think they're going to be up here. So we just need to mind our step and look around, see, see who is where. Um, I want to head for whichever door is closer between headquarters and administration uh that would be the communications uh room it is it's pretty much the first one on the left and then on the right side is something marked reception that you know from experience that when you were first interviewing it's basically kind of just like an area where people go to meet and and probably would have been where they would have been taking the ambassador to kind of do her intro well i'll definitely take a peek in communications if nothing else, to confirm that there's no one in there and nobody was, like, getting our call on the way in. Okay. I will say that looking in, unlike the rest of this level, the ceilings here are mostly normal. They're still a little bit taller. Um, and you can see almost immediately that 
those things on the ceiling are everywhere on the ceiling. Just everywhere. And they they look a little different in here. Whereas outside, behind you on the ceilings, they kind of have this almost stony look to them, almost kind of like rockish. As you look inside the server room, you can see that they look a little bit more organic. There's something about them that just seems more alive. And they are certainly dripping whatever they're dripping all over everything. Because you can see that the entire console of the communications room is destroyed. There is some goop covering every surface that you can see. It would seem that the solar flare theory may not have been correct. I hate this question, but looking mm-hmm. at at this sort of organic material on the ceiling, does it look like it is possibly colonists, like pieces of clothing or... Go ahead and roll survey the scene for me. I'm upset that this wasn't an outright no. <laughs> I was going to say, she's making you roll for it, so I'm afraid of the answer. Um, that would be a nine. Okay, so what's your question? Is there something important that I'm missing? So in relation to the idea that you're looking to see if there's something familiar about these things on the ceiling, looking closely at whatever this is clinging to the ceiling, you don't see anything that looks human or colonist uh, to it. Um, But I will say that since you're looking closer, you do notice that these things are dripping puddles on the floor. So what was being dragged? Oh. Because there's still some drag marks that seem to be going around. Oh, no. And where do the drag marks seem to be going in a particular direction? They do. Where are they going? In the same direction as they seem to have been going uh, from the cafeteria, which is down the hall. Right. All the way to the end, whatever is down there. I believe that whoever was operating your communications room were dragged further into the colony? What? By whom? That is a fantastic question. At first, I assumed something was creating these marks on the ground, but if these are covering the ceiling and leaving this viscous material, there's a lot of drag marks through the cafeteria all the way through to here. Okay, change of plans. We're following the drag marks. That seems to be our clearest path so far to figure out where somebody ended up. Why don't we just ask my mom what to do? She's the governor. She'll she'll know what to do. She's, like, in charge of this place. Well, we ain't found your mom yet. Let's go find her, then. That's what we're doing. We're going to look for her right now. Okay. (laughs) I'll go go ahead. Wait. Just slow down, though. (laughs) Slow down a little bit. I can't. Tara, you're precocious, and I like that, but I can't stress enough how serious this is. All right, you can come along, that's fine, but you need to stay close to us. We don't know what's going on here. But what if my mom is in danger? Then we're going to get her out of danger. But you stick with us, we'll have a better chance if we're all together, all right? Okay, but can we hurry, please? Absolutely. I'll I'll start, like, jogging that direction. Uh, So are you just going to head down the hall? There's also the doors on the side if you wanted to check them. It's up to you. Uh, I think at this point, if we think people were dragged away and we have a trail that they were dragged... That's what I'm more worried about. So I would probably okay. skip those doors for now. I would not think to open them at all. Yeah, I think I'm just going to follow the group and follow the drag marks and try not to step in any of the puddles. All right, so you guys head down through this hallway. And as you do, you can see that it, they don't seem to get more frequent, but they do seem to be more fresh. This drag marks, as you kind of move forward, you start to realize, okay, the ones previous looked a little bit dried out but this these are thicker there's something more gelatinous about them less watery it seems to almost be a gel on the floor um and they all kind of lead towards the end of this hall and you know from the layout of the colony that it is essentially stacked hallways where they're kind of uh sectioned off so that As we mentioned earlier, if there's some kind of breach, they can seal them off and not have it kind of spill over into any other relating sections. Um, So, you know, at the end of this is going to be the end of this level. And that's where the elevator shaft, emergency stairs, things leading down into the second level are. 
Um, and so you guys kind of pull up to the end of this and you can see almost immediately with no roll that something is wrong. There is a gaping hole of twisted metal where the elevator doors should be. And all these drag marks seem to go straight into it. Whoa. Okay, I don't know what could have done that, but this is officially not a game anymore. We are in very real danger from whatever did this. So everybody stay absolutely on your guard, because I do not know what we're going to come up against, but I have a terrible suspicion that we're going to come up against something very serious. Are we all still in on this? More than ever, if someone is in danger, that is what I am here for. Yes, lead the way, Mr. Northwood. I'm not going back. We're going to all go. You see uh, Juliet kind of, there's no way you're leaving me up here. Uh Uh-uh. And Six standing behind the ambassador. Meh, I'm good. Let's go. Y'all are some absolutely wild civilians. Okay, I want to gesture for Q to ease up to the edge of that elevator shaft with me so we can get simultaneously some light and some guns pointed in it. Yeah, I'll kind of light everything up and see what I see down the shaft. And what you see is terrifying. It is all those things off the ceiling coating every wall of this. And there's something about them like the communications room where they just seem somehow a little bit more alive than the ones that are on the ceiling above you. Just a little bit more maybe pulsating, maybe some kind of color coming off of them, some kind of almost sense of light, even though they're not really illuminated. There's something strange about these. And it is all the way down to the bottom of this shaft, which you can't see because it's very, very dark. Um, So for my special gun, uh, one of the pros is that it's bright, that it blinds the target. Um, I've been envisioning these kind of like big, those like under barrel grenade rounds, those like big cylinders that, you know, just as it's shot, it kind of lights up like a flare and hits like a bullet. Could I just pull one of the rounds without having to fire the gun. Could I pull one of the rounds from like my bandolier? I don't think I wear a bandolier, but wherever you keep bullets um, and like light it up and drop it down this chute. Yeah. Um, go ahead and roll use or repair an advanced item for me uh, to see if you can kind of pull this off. That's plus tech. Oh, good. My tech is good. That is a nine. All right, you can do it, but you have to pick two issues. So there's a list of issues under the move. Um, So you break it after using it. Something happens that causes you harm. It doesn't work for as long as you need it to. It's going to need something that will cost you. There's an ongoing negative side effect, or it will take some time to work with it or fix it. Um, Within this game, is assist something that can be asked to do after a roll is made? Yeah, I will say you can ask to assist. Like if you've rolled and you think you're on the border, you can say, hey, can someone assist me? Can someone assist me, please? Um, Yeah, I will absolutely try. I've worked with some munitions before. So for that, I'm, I'm rolling plus my connection. Yep, that is your connection. Twelve. All yeah. right, great. Yeah, uh, on a 10 plus, you get to re-roll your lowest dice. Oh, boy. Oh, no. So it doesn't necessarily up my up my chances. You always take the higher. So even if you rolled like lower than you rolled before, you're going to take the higher. Well, I rolled a one on one of them. Yeah. So that, so I, <laughs> yeah. I could be <laughs> in luck. trouble here yet. No, that's good. That was, uh, now it's a four. So that's way up there somewhere. That's like a 12. Awesome. Uh, So with that, I will say that you don't have to have any issues with it. You can just do what you want. Okay. I will do whatever finagling I need to do to this thing to get it to light. uh, And then I will just drop it down the elevator shaft to see how far down this horrible, terrible mess goes. And it's very much like kind of lighting a a somewhat brighter flare, um, definitely sparking a lot more than it should. And your hand kind of burns for a second, but you kind of flick it off. And as you toss this uh, little round down into the elevator shaft, you can see as it's falling, it just falls a long, long way. And you know that this elevator shaft goes all the way down to the third level essentially which based off of like kind of the height and the kind of dimensions of this um of this colony is actually quite 
quite a ways down. Um, and you are just barely able to see it land at the bottom of the shaft and kind of sit there and fizzle. Um, but I will say as it's going down, what you notice more than anything is that these things on the wall, they seem to respond to it. Something about their aspect changes. There's this moment where it's almost like the ones that were being lit and hit by some of these sparks kind of flinch a little and then go translucent. It's this very strange experience of seeing as this round falls of almost like seeing through them into the actual walls of the elevator. Like they almost disappear. And then as that light disappears uh, from their view, they kind of go back to being these almost kind of rock looking spongy things. I mean, is it safe to say those of us at the edge, like, do I see this as well? Oh, yeah. If any of you are standing, you know, at the edge of this elevator, the maw of the shaft, it's it's very obvious. I think I look perplexed at this. I don't think he says much, but it's out of character for him from what they've seen so far that he notices this and suddenly is just going, uh, for like a long time. Cat got your tongue cue? Um, apologies. I just... Something occurred to me. I myself am trying to blink that away and change the subject. So another thought hits me, and I'm going to hit him with that. And I think I say, Oakley, no, mm, sorry, North, do these seem... I'm trying to decide on a term for what I'm seeing, and what keeps coming up in my head is more well-fed than those near the entrance. Why would you say... Well fed. There's just something more vital about yeah, them. Yeah, why not that? Why not more vital? Why not healthier? Why not plumper? More moist of all of the terminology. Uh, because that would not elicit the thought that maybe the colonists have been consumed. Gentlemen, can I please remind you of who else we have in our party with us? I have not been talking as quietly as I assumed. My apologies. <laughs> And you just see Juliet Macy in the back. She is white as a sheet and shaking. like. <laughs> and I think I've backtracked a bit <laughs> while they're all looking in the elevator shaft. Um, I, I kind of want to go back and look. Is there a difference in the amount of liquid beneath the ones that are like more plump than the ones that were dried out? There is a very significant difference. The more dried out ones, the... As you're looking at it, you can see that it's a little bit more watery, less of the stuff that seems to make it jelly, and it doesn't seem as abundant. What do we think this is? Do we think that this is like some sort of wildlife that's crept in from outside the glass? Is it sentient? Do you think it's doing this on purpose? Do you think it's like a plant or an ant? What the fuck is this? Do we need to be scared of it like i get obviously it's dangerous but like is it gonna sneak up on us i like whip around to look behind me paranoid that it's literally creeping up on me somehow do we just start shooting it do we just start shooting the walls of the elevator shaft i can't imagine that would go well well it seems a might bit safer than starting to go down the elevator shaft while it's all over the goddamn thing i will give you this the elevator shaft is next to the emergency stairs, so they are right. there. I hate to keep beating a dead horse here, but we don't all got to be in danger for this, okay? This is my job. I'll go figure out what the hell this is, but y'all don't have to be here for this. Y'all can go back to the shuttle and lock the doors and get the hell out of here and wait for help to come. With all due respect, if this, and I gesture to like the twisted shaft... If this was done by whatever these are or something else accompanying them, I don't think a simple hatch on the shuttle bus is going to keep anyone safe either. Mr. Northwood, I would feel a lot safer if we all stuck together as a group. Also, I'm still hoping to make a positive first impression on the governor if she's still alive. Lady, you are delusional. If you think that this is, no matter what the circumstances are, if we find anybody that it's going to be a good first impression... We are walking through a nightmare hellscape. We have reason to believe, and I like lower my voice, that the people of this colony are dead. Ain't no way that this situation ends good. Mr. Northwood, I have saved dire situations than this. How can that possibly be true? <laughs> <laughs> 
to her credit, if they are still alive and we save them, that will both look very good for someone in Callista Gray's position, as well as my company and as well as your chances of continued work. Yes, thank you, Mr. Q. Oh my god! Grown-ups don't ever stop talking! Let's go! I agree with Tara Lake. The longer we wait, the more lives are in danger, including ours. And I'm going to start moving towards the stairs. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. As we're going down the stairs, I'm just I'm just walking up to Q and I'm going, to your point, there is no fucking way that I'm continuing to work here no matter what we find at the bottom of the shaft. <laughs> point taken. I hate everything that's happened since we got off this shuttle. At this point in the conversation, you've reached the bottom of the stairs to the second level. Um, and there's this kind of emergency door that is not open, but you can tell that it's unlocked. There, it has the kind of green button that says, you know, unlocked. Um, and you, there's a window that kind of looks down the hall. And you can still see that there is a coating of these bungee creatures. And there's a couple of them on the walls now. Compared to what we saw, you know, from what we just left, how well fed do they seem? Gross. Uh, these ones definitely seem more vital to go with uh, North's preferred term. Um, there is something about them now that you can kind of take a moment to look at them uh, without having to look straight down this elevator shaft or look straight up at the super tall ceilings. You can definitely see that there's something almost pulsating about them. Just the Just the way that they move, but also like there's something under their skin. Uh, like a change in color or pattern or something. There's just something weird about these ones. And they definitely seem much more alive than the others did upstairs. Are there more visible drag marks in this hallway? There are not. There's puddles, but there is not a lot of evidence of drag marks. Don't seem like nobody was dragged into or out of this level. And I will give you this because you will you would know where this leads. This These are the living quarters. All the doors down this hallway lead to, like, different kinds of apartment suites for people who qu- qualify for one, single rooms for people who are single, etc. This is where you, in fact, uh, North, would have had your apartments. Oh, that's super weird, then, that there aren't drag marks if we think everybody was just kind of ripped away. Would the governor's suite also be on this level? Yes, this is the living quarters area. It's very, very large because uh, they built it with the idea that there would be a lot more colonists. But currently, there's only about 50 people that really live in the colony as they're trying to attract more. And about half of those are people who work down in the mining complex with the processing. I'm having a hard time not just taking off and going home. But you're not? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm not taking off, but I'm definitely moving faster. Hey, where are you going? My house is just down here, always. I, we're, we're almost there. I'm just going to go check on my mom's. It's okay. I think I'm following, trying to match pace so that she doesn't get ahead alone. Yeah, absolutely. I'm coming with. Yep. Juliet Macy's in the back, <gasps> standing kind of... Uh, oh, 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 okay. You got this, Juliet. Let's go. I love Juliet's pep talks to herself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just tries to like, oh, God, and hops over one of the puddles and clings to whoever's in front of her. Do the living quarters that we're passing have any kind of windows? Is there any way to see into them as we go? You would know that these have decorative, really thick windows that are just supposed to kind of give the sense of uh, hominess. Um, but they're not, you can't see through them, essentially. They're supposed to be fairly private. Um, the general way that you would be able to tell if someone's at your door would be through a screen. As we go, I'm just trying to keep an eye to see if there's any evidence that people are inside of them or that people left them like even if there aren't drag marks if there are footsteps through goop or if there are like lights or like flames burning inside of any of these anything to indicate that they might still be occupied yeah go ahead and roll a survey the scene for me uh 10 all right what are you gonna ask what happened here you're looking for signs of people right in, in that regard. Yes. Signs of people currently here or of them having left. What you see is that unlike upstairs where you had seen uh, what looks like something being dragged through this goop, uh, for the most part, this looks pretty undisturbed, except that you do see as you move further into the hall, what look like a couple of footprints. 
some of them seem to be leading into doors. Others seem to go down the hall and take a left and head towards like, you know, a couple of the other directions where more living quarters are. But you do see a very small kind of handful of footprints that seem to be moving about. Is there something important that I'm missing? I will say as you're kind of following Tara through this hallway, uh, you see ahead just for a moment as your flashlight is aimed the other way, a very, very brief flicker of light in one of those decorative windows before it seems to disappear. Hey, hold up, hold up. I think there might be somebody still in this one. Um, I want to go like knock on the door. Okay. Tara, you know immediately that this door is the door to you. This is where you were headed. This is the door to your suite. Yeah, I'm I'm running immediately that direction, trying to get inside. The way these doors are set up is that they're supposed to be fingerprint activated or other kind of identifiers that are non-physical, but they do have emergency locks just in case something happens with the power, just for safety. Um, so you would have probably on your person one of those emergency keys. Yeah, I already have it out and I'm going to use it to unlock the door as fast as I can. Uh, and you unlock the door and as you rush uh, in and in this door, you can see immediately that there's a handful of those small little LED camper lights that have been set up around your recognizable living room. And as you kind of go inside, you see that there's five or six people all huddled around. And immediately, as soon as you enter the door, someone comes forward and gasps and goes, Tara? And you recognize the figure of your mom, uh, Yulia Lake. Mom, oh my god, you're okay! Oh my god, you're okay! And I just run and give her a big hug. What are you doing here? Oh my god! Where's mommy? Uh, honey, just... And she kind of looks around and looks up and catches you, uh, North, standing in the doorway. Oh no. In Starhold... You play as a group of spacers struggling on the fringes of the last great frontier, scraping by in a cold universe. Out here, even the smallest mistake can mean extinction, and help is a long, long way away. To find out more and get your copy, visit StarholdRPG.com. You can also find Starhold on Twitter at StarholdRPG. 